Hey everybody. Today's format is going to be a little more relaxed than usual. I just wanted to kick back and chat about a few different Warriors related topics here in one video. I've been mulling over a few of these thoughts for a while now, but kinda didn't think they warranted a dedicated video to each topic. So I thought I'd create a bit of a Frankenstein's monster of a discussion video today and split each discussion point into chapters for everyone's convenience. If there's enough interest in this sort of content, I'd love to make a monthly series out of this discussion format. So if you have any Dynasty, Samurai, or Warriors Orochi hot takes, fun facts or questions, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll present and respond to them in the next video. Also real quick before we jump in, I'd like to quickly thank SlantedPillow69 for joining Craig's army. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, I'll leave a link below in the description. Alrighty, without further ado, let's jump into our first topic. The Dynasty Warriors games are too easy now. So this is a sentiment that I've seen echoed across a fair few comments and videos since starting my channel. I was also inspired to chat about this from Profar's comment a few months back, regarding the difficulty of the older Dynasty Warriors titles. And I absolutely agree, Profar hit the nail on the head here. While I was capturing footage for my Lubu video, I found myself struggling against the enemy AI in combat significantly while revisiting the older games such as Dynasty Warriors 2, 3, and 4 specifically. I kinda had to swallow my pride a little bit. I used to clear these older games with ease as a kid, but now as a full grown ass man, I was struggling hardcore. For example, with Dynasty Warriors 2, the difficulty I was experiencing wasn't so much from the enemy officers, but from literally every other common peon that I came up against. The modern games seem to advocate and celebrate the whole one versus a thousand style of gameplay, where you can run into a crowd and cut through a hundred plus enemies like a hot knife through butter. But when it comes to the older titles like Dynasty Warriors 2, if you move too far into enemy territory, or if you aren't sufficiently leveled up, you'd end up swiftly dead within a quick combo of slashes from a peon. But yeah, I kinda wanted to chime in and add my two cents, or share my thoughts on the whole difficulty discussion, and I wanted to flesh out my thoughts on it all off the back of Profar's comment, because as I said up top, I 100% agree with it. I personally believe as console technology and hardware improves over time, the doors eventually open for creating new storytelling and combat experiences in these games. Somewhere along the way, the combat experience in the Warriors games had changed from being a more grounded style of fighting to more of a stylized and fluid gameplay experience. There probably wasn't a single point in time where this change occurred, however I believe this was an inevitable and natural progression. As new features such as moves, weapons, muso animations and hyper attacks were introduced over time throughout the Dynasty and Samurai entries, our favorite characters started to feel faster, stronger, and more like superheroes rather than soldiers. Despite the Dynasty Warriors series always feeling like it had a certain level of camp to its cutscenes and combat, it's almost as if its contextual or storytelling genre was shifting over time. As a kid, I viewed the Muso combat as something similar to an older martial arts film, or a battle scene from a medieval movie. This feeling slowly changed to more of an anime fight, where every unique playable character plays more like a supercharged protagonist. There's nothing wrong with this either, of course. These games are attempting to cater to a need or a desired experience. And I believe there's a large portion of the community that genuinely loves this type of gameplay, including myself. I do, however, believe that this anime, or one versus a thousand combat style of the newer titles, doesn't quite lend itself to the same difficulty experience that we found in the earlier games. Combat range and speed was more limited, as was the draw distance, and the attack animations weren't as smooth or sophisticated as they generally have been in the newer entries. And I think this lends to more of a challenging experience overall. To echo Profar's comment and summarize my personal thoughts, I do believe the older Warriors games were more challenging than the newer titles. However, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, nor does it mean that it's a guarantee that things will remain this way forever too. Enemy AI, number of enemies on screen, and overall player combat clunkiness are some of the biggest factors as to why the older games were harder when compared to the newer games. But I also tend to think this change is a symptom of a tonal shift in creative gaming design too. I'm probably going to chuck this next little section with the end of each topic. I thought I'd just quickly touch on what I'd like to see from the franchise when it comes down to difficulty. Now I'm not saying that Dynasty or Samurai Warriors should follow in the steps of a Souls-like game, such as Neo or Wo Long. But I would like to see a bit of a palate cleanser, and a return to a more grounded combat experience. Imagine fighting through a handful of enemies at a time through cold howling winds and snow, or the thick cover of fog, or even a dark and dense forest. 
with each enemy individually being easy enough to defeat in a couple of hits. On the flip side, enemy peons would also deal a decent amount of damage to your character, while also proactively trying to land hits on you. I don't know, a system that requires a little more awareness of how much damage you're taking, and thinking tactically about how you're going to survive a large-scale battle, would be really cool. I know it probably goes against the typical idea of making a product bigger and better in scope as technology and hardware improves over time. But I also think that just because a modern-day console can handle more enemies on screen, doesn't mean the Dynasty Warriors games need to be designed to have hundreds of peons on screen at one time. I was watching a Mortismal gaming video this morning, and he discussed that a longer-term series is generally more difficult to maintain the larger it gets, as small groups naturally splinter off and form within the fan base. This would be the various clusters of people gravitating to different elements and implementations that they'd like to see within the series over time. And I kinda think that's what happened to Dynasty and Samurai Warriors too. Personally, I don't think there's any particular right or wrong direction the games could take, as long as 100% effort is being put into the games being developed. So, I think there's definitely a place for the original, more grounded and aggressive combat of the early titles, or the more over-the-top, one versus a thousand combat of the modern games. And as for me, I'd just like a really high quality palette cleanser, taking us back to a more grounded style for the next title. Koei should just remaster Dynasty Warriors 3, 4, and 5. I've seen a variation of this comment countless times, and while I think it would be a cool idea, and I definitely wouldn't turn it down, I also kinda don't think we should just be hoping for a remaster. Don't get me wrong, I miss the old Dynasty Warriors games too. Hey, he just said the title. And there are plenty of remasters that are released with care and polish. The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy and Final Fantasy VII Remake are some that come to mind. The way I see it, I don't think there's enough goodwill or faith from the Warriors fanbase considering the past few years of Warriors titles. While they each have their merits, I don't view Dynasty Warriors 9, Warriors Orochi 4, or Samurai Warriors 5 as being major hits or a return to form. And honestly, I'd much prefer to see Koei deliver on the promise of a great new entry first, before jumping straight into a remaster. Another thing to consider is Koei's track record of downloadable content and additional purchases. Fans are wanting their favorite games from the early 2000s to receive a fresh coat of paint, and rightfully so. But let's put it this way, I wouldn't be half surprised if a remaster of your favorite game came with a sea of DLC and microtransactions. I can't help but think that would leave a sour taste in everyone's mouths, and ruin the trip down memory lane. But yeah, in summary, what I'd like to see is a great new game from Koei rather than a remaster. If they can prove that they can make an absolute banging Dynasty Warriors 10, then count me in for a remaster. Dynasty Warriors 6 and Dynasty Warriors 9 hate. Now I don't think this opinion is controversial at all, but Dynasty Warriors 6 and 9 are the most disliked entries amongst the broader Warriors fanbase. We all have our favorite series entries, and I've said it in other videos before that I don't actually mind 6 and 9. And if anything, I'm quite nostalgic for Dynasty Warriors 6. That being said, I think both of these entries represent an attempt to try something new and different to the existing series, and not committing 100%, sort of like an update light or something. For example, Dynasty Warriors 6 tried modernizing the Warriors formula and creating an endless fluid combat system and Dynasty Warriors 9 tried to introduce the Warriors formula to the popular open-world RPG genre. But we all know how both of those went, and more importantly, how everyone responded to it. If I could magically go back in time, and insert myself into the game director's seat, these are the things I'd change about both games. For Dynasty Warriors 6, I wouldn't have removed a single character from Dynasty Warriors 5, that decision in itself copped a lot of backlash from the community but I would have also designed the Renbu system to allow the player to switch fluidly between the normal and heavy attacks at any time. I think if this feature was in the game, the Renbu system wouldn't have been so harshly regarded. As for Dynasty Warriors 9, I would have fully committed to making the game an RPG. The combat feels stripped down and nowhere near as in-depth as it should be for the type of game it was trying to be. And while I don't actually have any issues with the open world in the game itself, I don't think it was designed with real player engagement or interactivity in mind, if that makes sense. Sure, there were skirmishes or plenty of loot and ingredients to scavenge or harvest, but it just didn't feel like there was enough variety or spontaneous events or encounters to occupy all of that space and make it feel like a living, breathing world. To give credit where it's due, a feature that was really cool was seeing certain key figures spread across the map in real time as they're progressing their own tasks. But anyway, in short, 
I probably wouldn't have added the R1 or right bumper skill sets in combat and gone down the path of unlocking or swapping out movesets as your character progresses through a skill tree. Kinda like in Dynasty Warriors 7, only more in depth maybe? And then in regards to the open world, I probably would have tried to flesh out the world itself with more NPCs, more enemy variety, and more events, and probably put less of a heavy focus on looting, hunting, and gathering. On one hand, I feel like Koei was trying to go for a more realistic depiction of China. But on the other hand, everyone can scale nearly any wall in an instant with a grappling hook. So I think some creative liberties with bringing some life to the open world would have been welcomed with positivity if it contributed to fleshing out the game and making it feel less repetitive. Probably a bit unrelated, but I just wanted to add this here too. Generally, I think the global audience was fairly tired of the whole open world thing by the time Dynasty Warriors 9 had arrived. Fast forwarding a couple of years, in the case of Elden Ring, an open world Dark Souls game. This was released years after the whole open world fatigue had set in for so many people. But because there was so much detail, effort, and care that went into this game, the fans absolutely loved it. I guess all I'm saying is, if you're going to take a game franchise in a new direction, or try something new, commit to the decision, and go all the way. And regarding any criticisms of Dynasty Warriors 6 and 9, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I don't personally believe either titles are as horrible as a lot of people online make them out to be. But I also think they both missed the mark with even being a satisfying and complete Dynasty Warriors experience. As I said before, I tend to look back on Dynasty Warriors 6 quite fondly and with nostalgia. I'm curious to see if anyone will share the same sentiment towards 9 after a few more titles are released in future. But anyway, on to the next topic. Warriors Orochi would be perfect for an Empire spin-off, or an open world game. I absolutely agree, and I literally have nothing to add to this. Except to echo my previous comments regarding Dynasty Warriors 9. Koei wouldn't be shackled to creating a realistic depiction of a particular land, as this would be a fictional blend of both China and Japan, as formed by the Serpent King. Would love to see this idea become a reality, if Koei were to ever dive into the open world genre again. Koei should stop adding new characters to Dynasty Warriors games. I've seen this one mentioned in a handful of comments as well, and I think I understand the sentiment behind it. I kinda get why people wouldn't want new characters to keep adding on top of the already exhaustive rosters of the Samurai and Dynasty Warriors games. Even if you're just one game behind, odds are you're probably looking at the new series entry while thinking, who the hell are all these new characters? More characters per game also means more character redesigns, touch-ups, and so on. This would likely be adding stress to development timeframes and costs of a new title. If Koei were experiencing issues with keeping up with an expanding roster size, they could potentially go down the route of rebooting Dynasty Warriors, similarly to Samurai Warriors 5, with a reduced roster size and a few fresh faces to allow for a more focused development process. Even though Samurai Warriors 5 still had shared weapon movesets, but that's a topic for another time. Personally, I'd like to see Koei go down the route of creating characters that share similar weapons, with completely unique movesets again. I'll just use Dynasty Warriors 5 as an example as this entry is fresh on my mind lately. There are so many characters in that game that have some iteration of a one-handed sword. However, each character still feels very unique, and that's expressed through their moveset, speed, strength, and so on. There's even some characters that share one or two attack animations, I think, from memory. Soon Jian shares an animation with Dong Zhua or Sun Chuan, but that's a stark difference between having a completely shared moveset with multiple characters, with the exception of one or two charge attacks, like Dynasty Warriors 7 or Samurai Warriors 5. You could even look at Liu Bei and Lu Xun in Dynasty Warriors 8. Their weapons look pretty damn similar, but their movesets are completely different. To play devil's advocate against my own point though, I feel like the floodgates have been opened with certain characters' weapons, and it's nearly impossible to go back. Take Zhang Hei for example. There's been two occasions where Koei has given him a different weapon, however they backtrack with a later DLC, or alternative version of the game. This is a case that I'm guessing that most of us could agree on. Zhang Hei just isn't quite Zhang Hei without his claws. But then on the other hand, there's characters like Huang Gai who literally has a boat for a weapon in Dynasty Warriors 8. And I definitely would prefer his old mace over the boat, any day of the week. So I guess it just comes down to a balancing act between designing a new character and choosing the unique weapon that fits them best, which would be no easy feat I'm sure. But maybe what I'm suggesting is that it would be cool to see new and existing characters return to more grounded weapons, and having the focus shifted more to their movesets rather than creating insanely unique and over-the-top weapons. But anyway, I feel like I got a little sidetracked with this point. But at its core, 
If there's new characters on the horizon to be featured in a new Warriors title, consider me on board with it. Will Dynasty Warriors 10 actually ever get released? Man, this one's a tough one. Again, Profar has made a great point on what could potentially happen regarding any future Dynasty Warriors installments, which I'll link that video below. I think given the track record and fan response to the past few Warriors titles, the best thing Koei could possibly do right now is keep tight-lipped about Dynasty Warriors 10 and let time and distance pass between Dynasty Warriors 9 and 10. Obviously, a lot of time has passed already, but they've also released Warriors Orochi 4 and Samurai Warriors 5 since then, both to very mixed reviews as well. What Koei needs is a win, and I think if they take their time and deliver a solid product, then the wait will be truly worth it. Regarding the quality we can expect from a new Dynasty Warriors title, well, let's just say I'm cautiously optimistic. I'd like to be surprised and blown away with the quality of a new title. However, I wouldn't be shocked if we also received more of the same that has been released over the past five or six years. When it comes to whether I think Dynasty Warriors 10 will even be released, well, put simply, I do think it's only a matter of time before we get a new installment to the franchise. Honestly, I'm surprised we didn't hear anything about it last year. I swear I saw a comment somewhere mentioning that Koei said they'd give us all an update on the Dynasty Warriors series at TGS this year. My mind could be making that up, but I think it'd be likely that if Dynasty Warriors 10 was well and truly on the way, we'd probably hear about it maybe late this year, and hopefully we'll get a release in 2025. But hey, that could very well just be my wishful thinking. I think I might leave it there for this video. Once again, a bit more of a relaxed ramble. However, I'd love to use a video format like this one to respond to comments and questions in the future. Do you have any spicy Dynasty, Samurai, or Warriors Orochi hot takes or questions? Let me know down below and I'll feature the spiciest ones for the next video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night, wherever you're watching from. Until next time.